All right, I am back again to talk about yet another camera. This time it is not a Nikon. It's not technically a rangefinder. Uh, it is a zone focusing camera, but it's a bit different. It's a medium format camera and it is the Hasselblad Super Wide. And this is a camera that I owned for about four years. Um, I purchased it kind of on the novelty factor. It is a very novel camera and I would say very unique because it is a 38 millimeter f4.5 Zeiss Bigon or Bigano lens. I know I'm probably saying that wrong and not much more. There's literally just a small flange that holds a, um, a Hasselblad film back or 120 film back onto the back of the camera. There's a shutter release button. There is a cold shoe where you can mount a viewfinder uh, and it of course is a zone focusing viewfinder. There's no focus assist. You have to basically guess with the focus distance. And it also had a, what else did it have? It had a film advance crank on the right side a little level bubble on top and a screw mount on the bottom so you could put it on a tripod and that's basically all the camera has uh, I mean technically you can there is a PC connection on the lens where you can mount a flash not something I ever did but I, I do know a photographer who does that and they get some pretty interesting results but uh, that's that's kind of a story for another day but uh, anyways I bought this camera like I said pretty much purely for the novelty factor just because it was so strange and I'd never really seen anything like it and I'd never owned a Hasselblad and I wanted to own one and technically it seemed like a good way to get into the system because it uh, included the camera and the lens at a pretty reasonable price. Um, I, I got a decent deal on it, I think. Uh, I forget exactly how much I paid, but it did seem considerably cheaper than a lot of stuff I had seen. Uh, a lot of prices I'd seen on other Hasselblad Superwides and even compared to some of the more modern kits like the uh, 503s and I think the 503Cs. I don't know a whole lot about Hasselblads, to be honest. I look at them every once in a while, but I've, I've only owned that one, and I haven't owned it in about a year now, so it's kind of hard to remember everything about them and every single camera brand, but I thought it was a pretty interesting opportunity to get into medium format, because it was the first medium format camera I ever owned, and I kind of enjoyed it. It had a very wide-angle lens. I found the viewfinder was not always very useful because the lens was so wide-angle. Interestingly, it could be focused very, very, very close. Uh, I think the minimum focusing distance on the barrel was listed to be about 11 or 12 inch. I think it was 12 inches, but it went well beyond that to probably about an 11 inch point, but it wasn't marked as such. And uh, you could focus very close and it wasn't always easy to get close focus accuracy, but you could do it. Uh, and I found that kind of interesting because I had an idea of doing some portraits with that. And I, I did a couple and then I never really followed through on it as so many things in life. But it was kind of an interesting, notable feature of the camera that I, I don't think most people realize it has. Uh, and I, I, all in all, I kind of liked the camera. It had an interesting charm to it. It was relatively small and relatively light for a medium format camera. And I have to say, it is probably technically one of the smaller medium format cameras out there. It is a bit on the heavy side because you have a lot of later medium format cameras that are made by like Fuji and uh, I think maybe, maybe Mamiya made a couple that were had a much more plasticky build that were a lot lighter, but those were generally considerably larger. Uh, but anyways, I, I, I kind of enjoyed the camera while I had it. I uh, used it a whole lot when I first got it, and then I kind of fell off using it when I moved. And I picked up after a couple of years and started using it again. Um, I, I think one of the reasons I didn't use it is because I had an A24 film back. Normally you'd use an A12 film back, and the A12s are specifically designed for 120 film and the A24s are specifically designed for 220 film. And as I say that, I realize I might be backwards on that, but I'm not 100% sure. But there are two different film backs, and one is specifically designed for 120 film, which is basically a 12-shot roll of 70mm uh, film. And another, the other one, the 220, is a 24-shot roll of 70mm film. And I had the the longer back for 220 film and I, you can't really find 220 film anymore so I always put 120 film in it but because of the some difference in measurements it would shoot 11 full frames and it would kind of give you a half frame on the last shot and I, I, that was a bit irritating and frankly medium format film is just pretty expensive nowadays uh, there's not really to my knowledge a cheap option if you know one please leave a comment because I'd love to know with some affordable medium format film even if it's just some pretty basic black and white film. I would love to know about it and try it out. Uh, so anyways, back to the camera. I ended up getting rid of it. 
the real thing that killed that camera and made me get rid of it was the fact that I bought the Mamiya 7. And when I bought the Mamiya 7, the only functional lens I had with it was the 43mm f4.5 lens. And I immediately liked that more because you have the you have the range finder on the Mamiya 7, so you can get more accurate focusing. Uh, you also have the 6x7 format, and I vastly prefer the 6x7 format to the 6x6 format. I know that's just kind of a matter of opinion. Um, I do appreciate the fact that you get 12 shots uh, shooting 6x6, and you only get 10 shooting 6x7, which kind of frustrates the matter of film economy even more. Uh, but that's something I kind of mentioned in my Mamiya 7 video. Uh, I got. The, I, I also like the fact that Mia, the the ah, boy, I'm getting tongue twisted. The Mamiya Seven had um, different lens options, whereas the Hasselblad Super Wide, you're just kind of stuck with that super wide angle lens. And it is a good lens, but you know, you can't always shoot wide angle as much as I would like to, and some other people would probably like to. You got to shoot something more standard, like 80 millimeter or 65 millimeter, 55 millimeter when you're shooting medium format, because you know, shooting at 43 or, or 38 or something, it's just too much most of the time. I think the same could be said with pretty much any format, but it really becomes apparent with the Hasselblad Super Wide when that's the only option you have. And I, I enjoyed the camera. I think that was another issue that made me kind of get rid of it was the fact that it was such a wide angle camera. It was a nice thing for sort of landscape type work. But beyond that, it, its applications were kind of limited. I mean, I guess theoretically, if you wanted to do some kind of creative street photography, you could probably use it for that. I, I've seen people do that on rare occasions and get pretty interesting results, but then again, I, I think you'd get really similar results. Um, uh, it's kind of uh, there's a lot of other cameras. I think 35 millimeter is just much better suited for that personally. But uh, if you really wanted to shoot medium format street photography, a Hasselblad Super Wide might be something to look into. Um, I'm not a big fan of street photography in a lot of ways, but I uh, I, I will just give that little hint of advice that it might be one of the few medium format cameras that would realistically be usable in a street photography type scenario. So anyways, to sum things up, I think this is a pretty good camera in a lot of ways. Uh, I say that knowing I didn't keep it, so it wasn't really good enough for me to keep, uh, but I was actually kind of split on selling it because when uh, before I sold it, I did notice that the Mamiya 7 had a minimum focusing distance of about three or three and a half feet, whereas the Hasselblad had a minimum focusing distance of one foot, and that was something that kind of appealed to me, but I also realized that probably wasn't something I was really going to use that much, and it could probably also be partly remedied by alternate lenses, like instead of shooting really close-up portraits with a super wide-angle lens, I could get a 80 millimeter lens and probably shoot much more appealing portraits uh, that would be much more flattering and have better compression and less distortion. And I think that was one of the factors that led me into selling the, um, the Hasselblad Super Wide. I wouldn't really say I regret selling it, but um, it was a very nice camera, and I every once in a while I miss it, but not too often. I found the Mamiya 7 to be a pretty good stand-in, especially with the 43mm lens. Uh, like I said, I really prefer that rectangular 6x7 format, even if it does end up costing a little bit more because of the, uh, the reduced film economy you get shooting that format. But um, it's hard to say. I think... Uh, the way I would sum up a Hasselblad Super Wide is if you are a Hasselblad user and you already have like a 500 or a 503, uh, again, I'm forgetting all the different model numbers. If you have one of those with like an 80 millimeter lens and like a 150 millimeter lens and you want something really wide angle and you kind of want a secondary camera, the Hasselblad Super Wide is probably a great option for you to add to your existing collection. But if you're not somebody who's already shooting Hasselblads and you don't already have like a spare film back laying around, it's probably not worth it. And if you want to just get a camera for novelty sake, the Hasselblad might be a way to go, but there are other cameras out there that are a lot more obscure and not quite as well known and generally cheaper because Hasselblad Superwides usually sell for, depending on the exact model, anywhere from about $1,500 to about $2,500. And there's other weird, obscure cameras you can get out there for... It kind of depends on exactly what you're looking for, but in the 35 millimeter range, there's quite a few interesting cameras like the Yasuhara uh, T918. You can pick those up for a little less than a thousand dollars, and usually you can get one with a lens for about a thousand or a little over a thousand. And that's a very rare, very obscure camera. And then you have interesting things too, like the um, if you're into the super wide angle stuff and zone focusing, you have the Voigtlander Bessa Ls with the wide angle uh, color. Scopar lenses, those are a pretty interesting option to do something similar to the Hasselblad Super Wide, but at a much lower cost point, because again, one of those cameras will probably cost you somewhere in the six to $900 range, depending on what lens and what specific model you go with. Uh, all in all, I gotta say, 
I, it's hard to really make a call on this camera. I liked it, but I don't think I would buy one again. Uh, I don't even think I would really suggest it to a lot of people I know, because again, I don't know too many people who are big Hasselblad shooters. Most of the people I know who shoot medium format use like a Mamiya or a Pentex um, of some various type. Uh, so I, I don't really know too many people I would really suggest it to, but I'm, I'm sure there are a few people I might meet in the future who I would suggest using it if they're big fans of wide-angle lenses. But uh, at the end of the day, it, it's a neat camera, but it is one of those cameras that it's a camera that's almost entirely defined by a very specific niche gimmick. Uh, and I almost hesitate to use the word gimmick, but it's so specific in its in its uses and how you can shoot with it that I, I just don't think most people are going to find it that useful or appealing. Not to say it's a bad camera, but I, I, it's just, it's kind of a one-trick pony at the end of the day. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, I'll stop rambling and just uh, leave you with a few more photos.